Right now, though, we're very happy to welcome in Mike Martz, longtime NFL coach, one year with the 49ers, and it was probably enough for him. God, that was a rough football team. And uh, he was just talking about the 49ers' week one appearance, or opponent, I should say, on the 33rd team. As we've been saying, this is a new media player that has been popping up on my timeline and in conversation more in the last 10, 12 days than ever before. It's new, and they're making their presence felt. Mike March, thank you so much for joining us here on 95.7 The Game. Damon Bruce and Ray Ratto, it's a pleasure to have you on today. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, thanks for having me. And by the way, that year, I was really proud uh, the way that team competed. We didn't have a whole lot of talent, probably, but coming down the stretch, you know, particularly that last game was a lot of fun against the Redskins. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm looking at this roster right now. Sean Hill, J.T.O. Sullivan. Frank, <laughs> you know, <laughs> look, I, it, but look at the receivers. We we got Isaac Bruce out of the closet. You know, I mean, there's he was he was done. He came back. He got fifty balls. We just it, it was it was tough. You know, the line was taped together. We didn't have a whole lot in offense, but I thought I was so proud of how well they competed. Our guys coached their hearts out and defensively played good. And coming down the stretch, last six seven. I thought we did a pretty damn good job. So, can we be honest about it? Since it's so far in your rearview mirror, Mike Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Mike Nolan gets his walking papers after a two and five start, and they go to Mike Singletary as the interim coach. Did yes. you felt? Did Did you feel passed over in that moment because of all the experience that you had? No, actually, I talked to him and uh, talked to Jed about it, and, and he, had, you know, and I said, "Listen, I understand this. He's been kind of been waiting." It's his turn. God bless him. I don't really at this point want to be a head coach. Uh, Mike Nolan's a very dear friend of mine. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing something like that, and he appreciated that. And I just, uh, at that point, I just enjoyed, you know, the offense with Ted Dolner. And we had such a great staff there on offense, such good coaches. And, you know, we were just a little short, some personnel here and there. Um, to move to the present, uh, as you look at games now, how much of what you see reminds you of when you were with the Rams and how much seems maybe almost foreign to you because it seems like football has changed a great deal in the last 15 years? Well, it's been dumbed down a lot. I think um, the college thing of lining up in one formation and checking, I just never liked that, never believed in it. Um, you know, I love what the 49ers do because they're creative. You can be out in two, two tight ends, one snap, four wide receiver, wide receivers the next snap. Uh, they change to what they need to do. I think mean, he does as good a job as any in the league. Offensively, in terms of attacking people every week, that's why they're successful. He reminds me more of what we did, Shanahan does. And you have to be pragmatic with your people. You just can't keep running the same stuff over People draw a beat at you. They're good on defense now. They they'll take it away. So I think that I think the Forty ers remind me more of what we did back then uh, than probably anybody. Um, I just the, the multiple formations, the multiple personnel changes, and trying to get personnel matchups was such a big thing when I came through the league, and we carried that on. Of course, we we ended up throwing the ball, but um, I don't know that that's the case much anymore. I think guys just run plays. It looks to me and. They're successful enough at it, but they just run as fast as they can and wear down the defense, and they don't care much for that. Mike Martz joining us here on 95.7 The Game. So when a coach is billed as an offensive genius, which is a, a card that you got to carry in your wallet for a great part of your career, what does that mean to you? And as we apply that saying to Kyle Shanahan, what do you think – separates him from the rest of the play callers and head coaches in football because without the Super Bowl ring to show for it, it feels like Kyle Shanahan has a level of league-wide respect that is usually only attached to coaches who have been there and done that in the Super Bowl. Well, that tag comes with great talent. That's why you have that tag. You know, not necessarily so much what you did, but because he's creative and he's always on. Um, it's hard to explain it. He, you know, he's not a, afraid to take risk and do something a little bit different. Um, he's very sharp. Everything he does has a reason. He attacks the defense as well as the NBA in the league. And people, football people know that. Um, you know, they're very, very, they've been very close. And he will, 
he'll win a Super Bowl before it's all over. I promise you he will. But uh, who knows? Maybe it's this year. I don't know. But he's as good as there is. You know, um, I said that about Mike Homer up at, at Seattle for a long time. And it just, if you know how hard it is just to win a game in the league, let alone the Super Bowl. And the Stars kind of got lined up for you, too. You know, the. You know, with the injury situation, I think that has a lot to do with who goes to the Super Bowl, who can persevere and lose less. I tell you what, go ask the Rams what they think of him um, as a coach, and I think he'd probably get a pretty good, pretty good grade out of them. He does a great job. He just does. He knows how to attack people better than anybody on, on offense, and I have great respect for him. Is it mismatches that he finds or the ways that he strings plays together? I think he has a great rhythm when he calls an offense. I mean, and you can't practice that. You can't teach that. You either have it or you don't. So you just, it's just the timing of it. The play, you just have a sense that the play, we have to run screen here. You don't think about it. You don't think, well, gee, they're, they're really rushing us and that, that. It's just the right time. You get a sense of it standing on the sideline and he has that rhythm. He, he knows. And, and what he does is he gets his players in position to make plays. It's not so much just, you know, wide receiver on a corner, but, you know, motion across and, and on this structure of defense, they're reduced down to the side. We'll run a reverse over there, that kind of a thing. So he understands attacking defense as well as anybody. He does a great job with it. Mike Martz now with the 33rd team here on 95-7 the game. So you said that you like Kyle Shanahan because he takes risks, and he's certainly taking a risk on a young quarterback. Going from Jimmy Garoppolo to Trey Lance, we've only talked about it about a million on-air hours since the draft pick was made over two years ago. And here we are. It's going to be Trey Lance going up against Chicago, and we'll talk about what you think of the Bears here in just a minute, Mike. Uh, but it, it's it's certainly a risky move. When it comes to developing as raw a young quarterback as football seen in a really long time, how would you go about grooming Trey Lance, and what are some milestones that you would be looking for? Well, he's been there not long enough to be ready. I promise you that. You know, we obviously look at a guy like Kurt, for instance, who had no background in it. He's been with them now, so he knows the offense. Uh, he, if he's not ready now, he'll never be ready. So uh, I don't care how raw he was. You know, Kurt only started one year in college for crying out loud. It's it's who he is and how well he competes and so much the offense and uh, those kinds of things. I, I think he's obviously, I'm not there, I've never seen him practice, but I would trust the fact that they made that move that there's a great belief in his ability and where he'll be and, I, and, I, and he'll coach him like that. And I think when you get a guy coaching him like that as, that believes in you, regardless, it just energizes you, it just gives you great confidence. And I think it's a I think they have a great relationship. There's a there's something missing with Jimmy G. They just did. I love the kid. I think he's a terrific quarterback. I love watching him play and competing. But you know, I will tell you, you know, there's just too many things I've said about his commitment to the game. And if that's a question, then he's not going to be happy. Um, can you look at Lance and not stylistically as mu as much as sort of prep level and amount of experience? Can you compare him in some ways to Kurt Warner, or are they so completely different that there's nothing to draw from one to the other? Oh, I think they're, they're drastically different. Um, Kurt didn't have a very strong arm, but he got the ball out so fast, and he could see and react with things quicker than I've ever seen anybody. He just, he'd come back and tell you exactly what happened in the blink of an eye, that kind of thing. That was so unusual, That's what made him so different. I don't know Trey when it's enough to know, but I, I know he's got a very strong arm. He's accurate. I love his passing skills. I don't know how he'll be in terms of decision making until he gets in the fire. We didn't know that about Kurt either until we, you know, until we stuck him in there. Um, and he had a rough go, but the first half he threw three interceptions and, and came back and threw three TDs and we won the first game. But it's just, I just trust their judgment with him, you know, under pressure. When they blitz you and when they're bringing the ranch, that's when you find out if he's got it or not. Uh, as you, know, you, you take a hit and make that throw, you know, and if he does, then they got a good one. Mike Martz here on 95.7 The Game. As you said, the Chicago Bears feel woefully unprepared to go and compete, and so maybe that's the right way for the 49ers to be opening their year. But since we have so little time left, I'd like to talk to you about 
the 49ers week two opponent, which is the Seattle Seahawks. And there is a big story out that Mike Lombardi thinks that the Seahawks are absolutely going to be coming after Jimmy Garoppolo. And the last thing that the 49ers can really control is when Jimmy would be getting on the plane to go up to Seattle and start learning and maybe be the guy coming in with the Seahawks in week two. Don't think that's a, an issue for him. Um, and I say that not in disrespect, but for any quarterback to go in there within a week or two in an entirely different system, assimilate it, throw to those receivers, and come out and play at a high level, it's just not going to happen. It just isn't going to happen. You know, they, I think the 49ers benefit that more than the Seattle Seahawks because they know Jimmy better. You know, they know his, what he can do, what he can't do, and they'll play to that. Um, I think it's a real detriment, you know, to have to play the 49ers if you're Garoppolo up there in Seattle after two weeks and, you know, trying to learn that stuff and where you got the protections. There's just so much involved. And defensively, 49ers, they'll just turn it, they'll turn it loose. They'll change fronts. They'll bring guys from different sides and he doesn't know the protections well enough to, to change it. And it, it, it can be a nightmare. Have you got any football coaching left in you? No. <laughs> no, that was 10 years ago. When I left, when I left Chicago, I knew I wanted out. At that point, it, it just, uh, level of frustration for me is I was done. I just wore out. It feels like a sport that certainly burned guys out, and you gave this sport an awful lot. You certainly made it one of the more fun years of football to watch. I mean, the greatest show on turf was something else, and you were the architect of so much of that. Mike, it was a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Well, thanks, guys. I sure appreciate it. And I will tell you, one of the best years I had was in San Francisco. The people there were great, and I appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Mike Martz here on 95.7 The Game.